Even though I quite like this book, I don't think it was as strong as The Alloy of Law. Let's talk about why I think that is. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, you're with Chris and today I'll be giving my spoiler free review of Shadows of Self, book 2 in the Mistborn Era 2 series by Brandon Sanderson. Now I have been binging this series in an effort to get all caught up so that I can start Oathbringer on the 17th of June and let me tell you I am so excited about that. The criminal elite of Ellendale were invited to an auction, which became a massacre when an unknown assailant slaughtered everyone in attendance. Now, Wax and Wayne, both able to use magic, both lawmen from the rough and ungoverned frontier territories are on the case. All the clues suggest the killer is a rogue Kandra, a secretive, almost mythical figure who acts from the shadows called Bleeder, and that the governor is her next target. Bleeder and the conspiracy behind the killings has to be stopped before the city is plunged into chaos. So this one takes place a year after the defeat of Miles and the Vanishers. Now Bleeder's intentions and motives here are a mystery and there are a lot of intricate plot threads where Wax, Wayne and Marazi try and get to the bottom of it. You have an assassination attempt or several assassination attempts, a conspiracy involving political upheaval and causing civil unrest amongst the population of Allendale. And why is this so? Uh, we don't know and you're kept guessing all the way through until the earth-shattering conclusion where nothing is as it seems. You just cannot predict how things are going to go. You cannot predict the ending no matter how much you try. This time, Wax has some help from a couple of unlikely resources, which was uh, surprising, but you'll have to read more to find out who they are or what they are. It is good, trust me. So I was eager to get into this because of the reading experience I had with the Alloy of Law. I enjoyed it so much and I did have high expectations coming into this. And the fact that it was a little bit longer than the Alloy of Law, I was looking forward to sinking my teeth into it and getting immersed in that world again. And I was keen to find out what Wax, Wayne and Marazi would get up to next and how their story arcs would pan out at the end of this volume. The pacing on this one was a little bit slower than the Alloy of Law, which I will admit was mildly disappointing, but on the other side of the coin, I do understand why that was the case, because there's such an intricate plot that it needed to be explored from multiple angles and viewpoints. So uh, with that to happen, the characters had to be split up which I didn't really agree with, but then after giving it some thought, it had to go that way because of how the plot was structured. I prefer reading about um, Wax, Wayne and Marazi when they're all together because of how they play off each other and the, the team dynamic there is excellent. But um, yeah, it just wasn't as, uh, as quick and fast paced as Alloy of Law. But uh, I'm hoping uh, in book three, the pacing will pick up and uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't because I do have a fair bit of trust in Brandon Sanderson to uh, up the ante in book three. So we'll see how that goes. Wax and Wayne, as per usual, are great together when they are together. In this one, they have minimal exchanges, which I uh, I missed a little bit. And with Marazi and Wayne in particular, when they're both off in their relative plot points, um, looking into the mystery that has occurred and the murders that have occurred, they're not really given much to do, which was a little bit disappointing. Uh, Wax, in my opinion, was doing all the legwork and the hard work and putting himself at risk. I just feel that Marazi and Wayne weren't in too much danger throughout the um, the book. I guess the, the stakes were a lot higher in book one, in my opinion. Everything was a lot more intense and there were, um, you know, everything was at stake. But I felt in this one that Marazi and Wayne in particular were underused and uh, it tended to affect the overall enjoyment of the book. Uh, not saying I didn't like it, I liked it fine, but it was an element there that I didn't quite agree with. But um, 
yeah, there just seemed something was missing. Uh, and it looks like the characters were a bit out of balance. It looks like Wayne uh, Wax was getting a lot more to do than uh, Wayne and Marazzi. So that was just uh, one minor thing I noticed. And also, you know, apart from that, the characters are still pretty solid. They're very, very likable and um, they evolve quite well. But it's just the fact that uh, those two didn't get much to do, which uh, was noticeable. Now, Steris, on the other hand, is useless and boring. She barely makes an appearance in the book. Uh, you know, it's true. But uh, hopefully we'll see more of her in book three. And I'm not quite sure what Brandon Sanderson has planned for her in terms of her role moving forward. I know that she's betrothed to Wax and everything. And... Uh, has very, very little page time, and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with her. Does she have um, a greater calling in later books? I'm just not sure, but it was noticeable that she was basically a walk-on character, and she wasn't threatened in any way. So again, it's an example of how the, uh, the stakes weren't as high in this one than they were in the Alloy of Law. This time around, we have the appearance of a couple of legacy characters, which was very welcome to read about. Uh, it gives uh, a lot of depth and referring back to Mistborn Era 1, which is always good uh, to have references there because obviously if you've read Mistborn Era 1, it's so much more enjoyable to read about these legacy characters. Um, if you go straight into Mistborn Era 2 without reading Era 1, I think that's a bit of a mistake because you're not going to know half of what's happening in terms of um, previous uh, characterizations and things like that. And I was pleasantly surprised having read Mistborn on era one that I knew all the references and everything uh, you know I recognized everything and one particular character I was very happy to read about again which I'm not going to spoil here you are just going to have to read yourself and find out but it's very very satisfying to read about these characters again tying back to uh, era one The world building is excellent as always. It's what Brandon Sanderson does best. Now, even though nothing really changes in terms of the world building between um, the Alloy of Law and Shadows of Self, there is a minor uh, change in the environment where we get to see the uh, underground of the old Lord Ruler's palace, uh, Critic Shore. Uh, and a different kind of flora is revealed there, which was very, very interesting to read about. So it has strong ties back to Era 1, and it was a new kind of environment that hadn't been explored before, which I think was very, very interesting. But apart from that, it still has that Western 1800s kind of feel. You have the uh, introduction of electricity, which is still pretty new. Uh, they have street lights and uh, the well-to-do houses have uh, electric lighting and things like that. So. Things are advancing quite well. They have the motor cars and the trains and the uh, fashionable dress sense, all that sort of stuff, which is uh, fantastic. And he continues to build upon that a little bit more uh, as each book goes along. But uh, he is the master at world building. I don't think there's anyone better at world building than uh, Mr. Sanderson. So the writing quality is still fantastic, don't get me wrong, but I found myself being challenged by the multiple subplots. Uh, there are a lot of intricate threads there to follow, so you had to think about things a little bit, and I found myself being impatient. Um, some of the subplots seem to cover the same ground, so a little bit of repetition, if I could say that. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, I just wanted to find out what was going to happen. But uh, at the end, I was well rewarded with uh, a big reveal, uh, which, actually shapes Wax's character a little bit more and gives him a little bit more depth because something uh, comes full circle to him but not in a good way and uh, you feel you really really feel for uh, Wax by the end of the book because he has gone through a pretty big ordeal and with this big reveal it uh, it was pretty earth shattering and uh, all you can feel is a bit of sympathy for Wax uh, at the end of the book because um, he just um, you know he feels defeated and betrayed and uh, uh, very down and uh, of course um, Wayne tries to cheer him up as well at the end but uh, yeah he's uh, very, 
very morose and down, uh, which is understandable considering what he went through. So it just uh, get, makes you appreciate Wax's character a lot more. And I think Brandon Sanderson conveyed those emotions very, very well uh, in the final pages of the book, which uh, was a pretty good payoff, really, considering there are a couple of things that didn't quite work for me in the book. Um, obviously, it wasn't as strong, in my opinion, than the Alloy of Law, but uh, he did come through at the end uh, in true Sanderson fashion with uh, a really good reveal and uh, a good tie-up, obviously with loose threads that will be explored in the third book, which uh, I can't wait to uh, see how everything pans out. Obviously, as I mentioned before, the inclusion of legacy characters was a masterstroke on Sanderson's part. I really enjoyed reading about these legacy characters because having read Mistborn Era 1 not too long ago, it was very easy for me to recognise all the references back to Mistborn Era 1. I particularly enjoyed reading about one character in particular that made a return. It was very, very satisfying to reacquaint myself with this character, and uh, this character is fantastic and was great in the uh, first three books and uh, yeah I just had a, a great time with that part now also uh, the final reveal at the end as I just mentioned that was uh, earth shattering it was the best part of the book in my opinion which um, gave some closure there but not in a good way and uh, seeing wax in a new light uh, now in the last review I did for the alloy of law I always like to look for uh, little nuggets of dialogue between wax and Wayne because I find their exchanges very witty and funny and I laugh out loud to them it's just real fun to read about and I like to share those with you and I have found one where they are in wax's office and uh, they're just having a bit of an exchange here so I'll read this to you rusts I should really write these things down I believe that is another thing you often say, Wax made a notation. Unfortunately, you'd first have to learn how to write. Now that's unfair, Wayne said, walking over to Wax's desk and poking around in its drawers. I can write. I know four whole letters and one's not even in my name. And I just love that between them. They have this friendship, but then you've got uh, polar opposites. You've got Wayne, who is very uh, impetuous. He's funny. He's outgoing. He uh, always likes to have a dig. And then you've got Wax, who is a little bit more reserved and a bit off standish and has a very dry sense of humor as well. So polar opposites tend to play off each other very, very well. And I think Brandon Sanderson does this extremely well, where he meshes the characters together. Uh, it's a very, very fine matchup and a great part partnership that I am looking forward to reading about further in book three when I start it. Another standout moment for me which really fueled my imagination was the discovery of a new element which uh, doesn't exist in Alimantic circles. Uh, no one knows what this element is, so where did it come from? Which I hope that question is going to be answered in book three. I can't wait to find that out because that just intrigues me. And uh, what is this element going to be called and what um, properties does it have in terms of elementic power? I don't know, but uh, I do hope I find out. Yeah, look, there are a couple of negatives with this one, only minor ones. The obvious one to me was the slower pacing compared to the Alloy of Law, which was uh, quite noticeable. Uh, the action sequences I found weren't as intense. The fight scenes weren't as intense as in book one. I thought Miles was a much better villain in book one than the Khandra in book two. There were a lot of um, you know high stakes in the Alimantic fighting in book one, and I didn't get that with this one. And the other negative I have, which is no more backstory to Wax and Wayne. They spent 20 years out in the roughs dispensing justice to all types of unsavory uh, criminals and whatnot. 20 years is a long time, and uh, enough time to chronicle certain events and go into um, a lot of detail in the backstory there. I'm not asking for copious amounts of backstory in these books, but what I wouldn't mind seeing is a whole book devoted as a prequel to everything because uh, I found it interesting that there's a reason why uh, Wax was out in the roughs for 20 years and why he came back to the city. There's a bit of a reveal there towards the end of the book which was really really interesting but it's okay to have a couple of hints but um, it's being alluded to about prior events in the roughs but we're not getting any more detail about that and I find that a little bit 
tantalizing because I want to explore that part of Wax's life. And I'm not quite sure what's going to be happening in terms of that in books three and four, but uh, it's something I would definitely like to see. Look, while it wasn't as good as the Alloy of Law, which I've said several times, it was well written. There's no debate there at all. And, you know, I was a bit disappointed with the lack of backstory, as I just mentioned. I really wanted to see more of that. But uh, the pacing, obviously, wasn't as intense as the first one. I did prefer the characters together rather than working separately during this book, and I'm hoping they work together in book three. I really want the third book to be brilliant, and I'm going to go into it with very high expectations because a book three, in my opinion, is very, very important. There are uh, loose plot threads to tie up, and there are more stakes to be had, hopefully. So I can only predict that there are going to be a lot higher stakes in book three, uh, and uh, I think book three takes place in a different location as well, in a southern city, which will be very, very interesting, and and it's going to be, um, yeah, I can't wait to find out how things pan out. But uh, I've got all of uh, next week or this week to find out and uh, looking forward to the ride. And obviously this is the longest book in the first three books so far. So hopefully I'm going to get some answers and uh, because I trust Brandon Sanderson, I'm sure I will. So once I finish book three, The Bands of Mourning, I plan on getting straight into Oathbringer, which I am so looking forward to, which I've said a couple of times on the channel of late. Now, because The Lost Metal was published in 2022 and Oathbringer was published in 2017, I don't really need to read uh, book four before going into Oathbringer. I'll just read that later on because I am uh, so keen to get into Oathbringer. It is just not funny. But I'm doing a buddy read of that, as you've uh, heard me say repeatedly with John over at Talking Story, and I'm looking forward to his take on it because we are both excited to find out all about Delinar as we both make that journey back to Roshar. And uh, yeah, you are, we'll, we'll be talking about it. Uh, he will be inviting me onto his channel on a guest spot to take apart the book and talk about what we like about it, much like we did with Words of Radiance. So I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to uh, catching up with him after we uh, read the book and compare notes. So there you go guys, that is it for my spoiler free review of Shadows of Self. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe, help me get to the 500 subscriber mark, I have 27 more to go and I know I can get there, no 17 actually, sorry, 17 more subscribers to get before uh, I can do my 500 subscriber live Q&A event so I would appreciate if you could do that for me and in return I'll promise to deliver the best content I can and offer up any feedback as per the comments below as per usual and uh, until the next video guys happy reading